Hi, my name is Alex from APC Dynamics. And in this video, I'm going to talk about how to set up financial reports for Dynamics 365 Business Central. First, before you create your financial reports, you want to organize your chart of account. We'll go through how to do that. Next, we need to set up our road definitions, which are the X axis, which um, basically list out your GL accounts that you want to print on your income statement or your balance sheet. Lastly, we're going to talk about how to set up column definitions, which is going to be your Y axis that they're going to display. For example, whether we want the column to display the balance at date or the net change, or you could have a monthly or yearly comparison. Let's get started. All right. So the first thing we need to do is make sure we format our chart of account so it looks nice. So I'm going to bring up my chart of account and you see that uh, we only have posting accounts listed. What I want to do is add my beginning and ending totals. Not only will this help us in creating our financial statement, it will also make our chart of account easier to read when we open up the chart of account page. So here I'm going to add a total account for my cash and I'm just going to add an account here. One, 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 zero, zero. I'm going to call it cash begin total. This is going to be a balance sheet account and the account type. I want to set it as begin total. Now you'll see because this account is marked as begin total, it'll automatically be bolded for us. So I'm going to add in an account to have my cash as an ending total. Click on new, give it a number and the account type would be ending total. So you'll need to go through and add your beginning total and ending total to your chart of account. Now you could also add a subtotal within a subtotal. For example, I want to group my assets into a total. So I'm going to add a new account, asset begin total and change that as my beginning total. And I'm going to go down to my assets, the end of my asset accounts and add an ending total. After I set up my, all of my beginning and ending total, I am just going to click on home and then chart of account. What this will do is it will add my formula into my chart of account. And if I scroll down to the assets, and when I scroll down to my asset end total, you'll see that it will automatically calculate the formula for me. All right, so now that you've made your chart of account presentable by adding beginning totals and ending totals, we can now set up the road definitions to create our income statement and balance sheets accounts. So let's do that. To set up the road definitions for your financial reports, you could use the search functionality and search for road definitions. So I'm going to click on this. By default, you're going to get a lot of road definitions that's configured to the demo chart of account. It's pretty much useless. You're better off creating your own. So let's do that. So I'm going to add a new line. Um, I'm going to create a income statement, IS. And I'm going to create another code for balance sheet, BS. So let's start by defining our road definitions for the income statement. So I'm going to highlight this income statement line and I'm going to click on home and then edit row definition. It's going to give me a blank list from here. I'm going to use insert and insert GL account. Now remember the beginning and ending total exercise that we did earlier. This is where it's going to come in handy. So I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to select my revenue accounts and my cost accounts and I'm going to highlight all of my income statement accounts. And I'm going to click OK. Now you notice that it will automatically bring over my beginning and ending totals and it will automatically bold it and indent it for me. So that's what I was saying earlier. It's worthwhile for you to organize your chart of account with beginning and ending totals. That way when you create your income statement or balance sheet, all of the formatting will be taken care of. And of course you could go through and you could add rows, bold them, indent them as you wish. I'm going to go to my balance sheet and I'm going to do the same thing. Edit row definition. Click on insert GL accounts and highlight my balance sheet accounts. Same exact thing. If you added your beginning and ending totals, it will bring them through. If not, you'll need to manually configure them by bolding 
and indenting. All right, so that is our row definitions. Now let's talk about the column definitions. All right, to set up the column definitions, you would search and search for column definitions. And same thing, by default, there are a couple of uh, pre-configured column definitions for you to choose from. Two of the more interesting ones are and net change. You would use this net column for your income statement. And the other more interesting one is the M balance, which is displaying your balance at date. This is typically used for printing your balance sheet. So if I go to the uh, edit column definition for M balance, you'll see that there's a column defined for with the column type of balance at date. And I look at M net change. I click on the alt column definition. There is a column that's defined for me called net change and the column type is defined as net change. In our example, we're going to create a new column layout and I'm just going to call this a monthly comparison analysis. So I'm going to click on the edit column definition and just type in my month that I want to display January, February and so forth and so on. Now I'm going to use personalize and I am going to add my comparison period formula. Drag in next to the comparison date formula. If I want to have the date only display January, I would need to put in a comparison period formula. We're going to show the comparison period formula. And there's certain formulas that you can put input into the comparison period formula. I can drop a link in the comments to show you where to go to learn more about these formulas. But in this case, I'm going to put in FY and then in brackets one. This will tell the system that I'm going to print the information for fiscal year one. In this case, the in the demo company, the fiscal year starts at January 1st. So that's my first fiscal year. So I'm going to go through fiscal year two, fiscal year three, fiscal year four. Now let's say I want to add a column to show the totals. On the column type, I am going to set up as formula. And in order for me to calculate these different columns, I need to give a column number. So I'm going to go A01, A02, A03, so forth, and so on. And on my formula, I'm going to sum up A01 to A04. And that's it for setting up your financial reports. If you run into any issues creating this report, please let us know. Thank you.